words of power because we are kings and our words matter. When fear comes, immediately, decision time, you need to say, I know where you're from. You're not from inside of me. I'm a new person. I'm a new creation made in the image and likeness of God. I'm not made to fear. I'm made to love. Love is in me. I'm not a doubter. I'm a believer. Even though I don't feel like believing, I will believe because that's what I am. I'm a believer. Most Christians, the best of them, basically know only this, that if their sins are forgiven, one day they'll go to heaven when they die. Beyond that, they don't know anything. But the Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, as it is written. Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree, so that the blessing of Abraham may come upon the Gentiles. Several years ago, I started talking about the blessing of Abraham. Do you know how many people came and told me, and how many people saw that on television and came and told me, we never knew that we have the blessing of Abraham. And I began to speak about what the blessing of Abraham is. First of all, it's a material blessing. Material blessing. Don't be shy about it. Some people cringe immediately. You know. <laughs> Why are you ashamed of what the Bible says? It's a material blessing. God made him rich. That's it. Once you say the word rich, it doesn't hurt anymore. God made Abraham rich because God himself is rich for your information. 
So it is a material blessing. Nobody can deny it. It's all over the Bible. It's a material blessing given to Abraham and his children. Secondly, it's a physical blessing. He couldn't have a child. His wife could not bear a child. God opened her womb. Not only opened her womb so that she could have a few children, but God opened her womb so that the seed of that woman will become like the stars of the sky and the dust of the earth and the sands of the sea. God multiplied Abraham, a childless man, who was lamenting about how he is going waste without a child, blessed him abundantly and made his seed like the stars of the sky, made him to multiply. That's a physical blessing. No one can deny that. Thirdly, it's a spiritual blessing. He became a friend of God. God never did anything in this world without telling and informing Abraham. When he wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he said, how can I do that without telling my friend over here? I got only one friend here. Abraham, I got to talk to him. I got to tell him. And Abraham says, oh, wait a minute. If you're going to do that, my nephew is there. That lot who's a lot of trouble. Will you do something about him? Don't. You know, let him not be destroyed in this. Abraham can just negotiate with God just like a friend. Such a privilege. And, and Abraham had a covenant with God. That's the great spiritual blessing. He was in a covenant with Almighty God. Where God has told him, everything that I have is yours, Abraham. You can never want in your life. You can never lack in your life. You can never be weak in your life. You can never be failure in your life. You can never go to nothing in your life. Because Almighty God, God said to him in 17th chapter of Genesis verse 1, I am Almighty God. I'm El Shaddai, he said. I'm El Shaddai. And I'm your friend. I'm in a covenant with you. I'm one with you, Abraham. You can never fail in life. Nobody ever can raise a hand against you. Nobody can ever defeat you. No circumstances can destroy you. You and your seed will last forever and ever and ever. Hello. That's Abraham's spiritual blessing. Having the favor of God, the blessing of God upon him. How many of you think that's three blessings? That's more than enough? If you have material blessing... Physical blessing and spiritual blessing. It is because of that spiritual blessing that was given to Abraham. Today we are blessed. Today we are blessed. It is through Abraham Jesus came and Jesus became the savior of the whole world. Not just to Abraham's sons. So I began to preach on these things in, 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 in the blessing of Abraham, the blessing series. You need to hear that if, you, if you're not here for that. And a lot of Christians do not and have not ever heard about blessings. These blessings. So how will they speak blessings? How will they believe in blessings? They only believe that their sins are forgiven. They'll go to heaven. They don't know anything about blessings. They don't know anything about anything else. So they cannot believe those things. So when a, peop when a lot of people talk, it is giving evidence to what they know in their hearts. You can see what they know. They don't know about a lot of things. They know Christ as only the Savior who forgives sins and takes them to heaven. They do not know him as their healer, their deliverer, their protector, their provider, their shepherd, their everything. The captain of salvation, the Bible calls him. They don't know all that. Who leads us in this warfare and causes us to win. They don't know. They've never heard. They have a limited view of Jesus. Our confession shows what we know. It's evidence of what we know. Thirdly, Confession is testifying to the truth that we have accepted and believed. We are testifying to the truth that we have accepted and believed. Now, regarding this, I would like to read one particular verse in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. 
And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Now, do you understand what it says? Now, the Bible, that's the problem, you know. Sometimes it looks like it's saying a lot of things and we read it also and we just go on as if we have understood it, but we don't understand it. That's why we need solid preaching. That's what preaching is all about. Simply explaining what is there. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. How did they overcome the devil? It's talking about the saints overcoming Satan. It says they overcame him by the, came him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony. Three things were there in the overcoming power that these people had, the saints had over the devil. Three things are important. One, the blood of the lamb. Two, the word. Three, their testimony. How did they overcome Satan? The blood, the word, and the testimony. Now, how does it work? What do you do? How do you win or how do you defeat Satan by the word, the blood, and testimony? How does it work? I'll show you how it works. What do you do with the blood? Now, is there blood somewhere that you come and sprinkle somewhere and you smear somewhere or something like that? No. We're not talking about that kind of thing. We don't believe in that kind of thing. When it says they overcame him by the blood and by the word of their testimony, this is how these three things work. The Bible talks about what the blood of Jesus has done for us. The blood of the lamb. The Bible talks about how his blood was shed. Our sins were remitted. We were forgiven on the basis of the shed blood of Jesus Christ in whom we have redemption through his blood, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 says, in whom we have redemption through his blood. So his blood is the thing that has brought us forgiveness of sins. Redemption which is the forgiveness of sins, it says clearly. So that's what the blood has done. In another place in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22 to 24, it describes heaven, the scene in heaven where God is seated and everyone that is there surrounding the throne of God. Talks about the Old Testament saints and the New Testament saints, the angels of God, the throne room scene. Talks about Jesus being there and then talks about the blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Very interesting. What is there in the throne room where God is sitting? Angels are there. Old Testament saints, spirits are there. New Testament saints, spirits are there. Jesus is there, our mediator of the new covenant, it says. And then it says, there is this one thing called, there is the blood of the lamb that speaks better things than that of Abel. Remember the blood of Abel that was shed by his brother? It cried out for vengeance. It cried out for vengeance. God to punish the crime. Here was a blood that spoke not for vengeance, but for mercy the blood of Jesus. In the presence of God is the blood of Jesus constantly speaking on our behalf. Jesus is there as our mediator, as our advocate, constantly speaking on our behalf. And the blood also speaks, and it says it speaks better things than that of the blood of Abel. Blood of Abel cried out for God's vengeance. The blood of Jesus cries out for God's mercy upon us on the basis of what Jesus has done on the cross of Calvary. So what, how it works is this. When, they, when it says they overcame that Satan by the blood of the lamb, by the word and the testimony, this is how they did it. They took what the word of God says about what the blood of Jesus has done. They took what the word of God says about what the blood has done. They already got two things in there, blood and the word. And made it their testimony. That means made it their confession. Let me say it again. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony means they took what the Bible says, the word of God says, about what the blood of Jesus has done for them and what it means for them. And made it their testimony or made it their confession 
when they took what the Bible says about what the blood of Jesus has done and began to confess it, this is how they defeated Satan. And I can very well believe it, my friend, because that is how Jesus defeated Satan. He defeated Satan by what God has said. When he looked at the devil and said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He was simply quoting the word of God. What God has said he was saying. And the devil was defeated. I can very well see the believer also acting just like Jesus. The saints of God acting just like Jesus. They took, the, took what the word of God says about what the blood of Jesus has done. And they spoke it as their testimony. Testimony is your personal confession. When you testify. They took what the Bible said about what the blood has done and made it their testimony, their confession. When they confessed it, the devil was defeated. Just like Jesus defeated the devil with the word of God, they defeated the devil with the word of God and their testimony. The word of God should become your testimony. Some people think testimony is what they say. Their stories. Testimony is not your story. Testimony is saying what God says. That you have experienced in your life that what God says is true. That's what testimony is all about. Amen? Are you there? When you do that, when you take what the Bible says about anything and make that your testimony, when you take what the Bible says about the blood, when you take what the Bible says about your healing, when you take what the Bible says about your success, when you take what the Bible says about your future, when you take what the Bible says about your family, when you take what the Bible says about the work of your hands, when you take what the Bible says regarding any issue in life, you take what God says. When you take the truth that comes to you, saying that this is what you have in and through redemption in Jesus Christ in that area of your life. This is what it means for you as a result of Jesus dying on the cross. When you take those words, those truths, and begin to speak it, confess it, and testify of it, I'll tell you, all the angels come to attention. All of heaven backs you up. You know why? The Bible says angels are what? They're mighty angels who do according to the voice of the word of God. The word is here. The voice is mine. Right? I have to give voice to the word. That is why a believer's voice is a voice of faith. The voice of faith is very important. You take the word of God and give it your voice. Lend it your voice. The angels act not on the word, but on the voice of the word. When they hear the voice of the word of God. Psalm 103 verse 20. Again, confession. All of heaven comes to attention. But when you speak failure and defeat, you're doing something terribly wrong. You know what? You have an ability to choose and speak what you want to. The Bible says, choose life. Have you read that in Deuteronomy chapter 30? Choose life. Put before you death and life. Choose life. Blessing and cursing are put before you. Choose blessing, it says. How do you choose life? Is it in a package so that you can choose? How do you choose life? Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are life. So you got to choose his words. You got to forget about what you feel like saying. You got to forget about what everybody is saying in any situation. You need to choose what God says. You got to choose life. Everybody say choose life. Choose life, my friend. You got to choose life. That means choose means you got to determine. You got to decide. You got to make a decision that I am not going to speak that. I'm going to speak this. I'm going to say, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say this. I'm going to change what I've been saying. I'm going to choose to say this. I'm going to stop talking nonsense. I'm going to, I'm going to stop, stop talking all the weakness and, and failure. I'm not going to stop talking fear and doubt. I'm going to stop all that. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love and power and sound mind. I'm not made to doubt. I'm not a doubter. I'm called a believer. 
You know what your name is? We call you believers around here. Believers in AFT. <laughs> believers. We don't call you doubters. I don't sit there and say, have all those doubters come? <laughs> Even though some are. <laughs> we call you believers. You are a believer, I'm a believer. Anybody that has put their faith in Christ is called a believer. One fellow said to me, you know, but I can't help it, brother, I'm doubting. I said, never mind, you're a believer. <laughs> so don't talk what you feel like. Talk what you are. You are a believer, therefore only speak God's word. You're a believer. You're not a doubter. Oh, but I feel like doubting. Forget about it. You are a believer. You'll feel all kinds of stuff. Don't end up doing it. You'll feel all kinds of nonsense sometimes, you know. But you're not supposed to do it. Act in line with who you are. Who are you? I'm a believer. What do I believe? I believe in Jesus Christ. That he is my savior and my Lord and my everything. So what do I talk? I don't want to talk my feeling. I don't want to talk what I feel like. I don't want to talk what it looks like. I don't want to talk reasonably according to the world. I want to talk only what God says. I'm a believer. Everybody say, I'm a believer. Every time you're doubting, remind yourself, I'm a believer. Doubt cannot be in me. I reject doubt. I'm a believer. Every time you fear, you say, God has not given me the spirit of fear. Fear is alien power that has come into me. It does not belong to me. It is not part of me. It's not coming from inside of me. It is coming from outside of me. God has not given to me the spirit of fear. The new life that God has given to me is not made of fear, but love and power and sound mind. That's what God has given to me. I refuse to fear. I refuse to accept fear. I reject fear in Jesus' name because I am made in the image and likeness of God not to fear, but to love. Hello. See, choice is involved. If you sit there and say, well, I feel like fearing, brother, what to do? So today is a fear day. I'm going to fear nine to five. After five o'clock, let's think about it. Maybe someone will come and pray for me. Some people need somebody to come pray for them every day. When fear comes, immediately, decision time, you need to say, I know where you're from. You're not from inside of me. I'm a new person. I'm a new creation made in the image and likeness of God. I'm not made to fear. I'm made to love. Love is in me. I'm not a doubter. I'm a believer. Even though I don't feel like believing, I believe because that's what I am. I'm a believer. I may feel like a monkey sometimes, but I'm not a monkey. I may feel like I want to climb a tree, but I'm not a monkey. I'm a man. So I act in line with the fact that I'm a man. Your feelings may come and go, but I need to act in line with who I am. Are you there, my friend? You're a believer. Speak what you believe from God's word. You're a believer in God, in Jesus Christ. Consider the high priest of your confession. Who have you confessed? Who is your Lord? What is your confession about him? Never forget that. Keep on confessing. Because if you keep on confessing, that confession will bring the reality. That will become the reality of your life.
will worship every evening I'll adore every day with you sweet sweeter than the day before What a privilege to know you like I know you to be loved like you love me What an honor to worship truly worship from this heart that you have free the rising of the sun to the setting of the same every day with you Lord sweeter than the day before every day with you Lord sweeter than the day before every morning I will worship Every evening I'll adore Cause every day with you is sweet Sweeter than the day before What a wonder to live my dear. What a wonder to live like Really live like Overcome anything What a reason to live to Freely live to Every day my everything Sitting up the same every day with you, Lord. Sweeter than the day before. Every day with you, Lord. Sweeter than the day before. Cause every morning I will worship. Every evening I'll adore. Every day with you is sweeter, sweeter than the day before. Just keep clapping our hands. We're going to sing and you'll repeat after us. Right? Repeat after me. Every day, every day with you, Lord. Every day, every day with you, Lord. Every day. Sweeter than the day before Every day Sweeter than the day before Every day Every day with you, Lord Every day Every day with you, Lord Every day Sweeter than the day before Every day Sweeter than the day before Every day Every day with you, Lord Every day Every day with you, Lord Every day Sweeter than the day before Every day Sweeter Every day with you, Lord Sweeter than the day before Every day with you, Lord Sweeter than the day before Every morning I will worship Every evening I will adore Every day with you, sweet. Sweeter than the day before.